Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video, we're going to be talking about the ocean boards and the progress that I've made to this point. Uh, if you're new to the channel or new, just, yeah, new, you just dropped in, um, welcome. I hope you find something here that is of interest or entertaining to you. Uh, there is a playlist that um, has all of the videos that have led up to this stage. So if you're curious about how any of this has happened to get to this point, uh, you can check out that playlist and see some of those videos there. Uh, I should also mention that I've been a little away from everything, like I haven't checked email or comments or even I have a video that I've released, I think, just before this one and that's actually been sitting in the queue for like two weeks to be released. It's all edited and ready to go and I just even haven't had the mental energy to do that because I've been working exclusively on these boards uh, for the past, uh, I don't know, a week, 10 days, maybe something longer than that. And I really needed to move them forward. Um, I, it's in my interest and the customer's interest to have them done. Uh, but uh, there were some challenges that came up and are continuing to come up. And those have been sometimes significant and they've taught me to never again project a finish time, date, progress week, whatever. I don't hit those marks and it's partly because there's things that happen that I don't uh, foresee. So these will be done soon <laughs> and we act actually I'm pretty close. Um, but what I thought I'd do today before you I shoot the finished video is um, show you some of the challenges uh, that I have had uh, and how I've overcome them and um, some of the you know thoughts on on what's left to do for these particular areas. Uh, so this is actually quite a bit of uh, video here I'm going to shoot. So I'm going to break this up into two parts. So this part, this first video, is only going to be on the water itself. Nothing about the surf uh, or the shore. So um, if you have questions about those after you've been watching this video, stay tuned because part two will discuss the surf and those effects on their own. So. Uh, Let's get going. We'll jump over to the bench and I'll show you how it's been going so far. So here you see um, three of the shoreboards and one of the uh, first challenges that I really encountered in a major way once I started getting close to the end was that the watercolor between the two boards uh, or between you know any of the two boards actually varied more than I expected and this is due to the varying thickness, thickness, thicknesses of the levels of all of the materials that were put down. So there's the underlying uh, multi-level pour of the water. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when I show you the cliff boards. Then there's the um, resin uh, wave cast that's put over it and how thick that is. And that varies depending on how I cut it and where and, and you know, because the master wasn't particularly even uniform all the way throughout. And also then the amount, the amount of um, tinted caulking that I had to put over areas uh, to bring these areas level uh, to each other. And so the, that combination of things really meant that there were sometimes pretty significant color differences between some of the boards. And you can notice some of that remaining. It, it's been compensated for fairly well, um, but you can see a little bit of that shift here where this is a little bit more blue and this is a little bit more green. This board actually was more green than the, what you see here and I've shifted it a little bit blue. Also required some, um, some color shifting in the deep water areas here as well as some of them looked a little more green, some looked very, very dark. So I ended up needing to mix like three more uh, colors of caulking to apply to different areas to raise up areas and match them uh, color wise to the other areas. That was a surprise. And uh, you know, it's actually worked out fairly well. Um, and uh, looking like even at this spot, so then it becomes matching a little bit of texture. And so here um, I have more uh, sort of a rougher ripple here and it's a little bit smooth here. So what I probably uh, will do is just go in with a very, very thin coating and just give it a little bit of texture and probably um, pick a little bit more of a green. I'll have to look at all the boards and see where all the colors really lie. Um, but this somewhere in between these two is about the, the union that I'm looking for. So just a touch of green here will help uh, bring those two together. 
So here you see the, uh, an open water board. There's, there's nothing that direction. And then you see uh, the two cliff boards here and they actually have the same color shifting problem and it was magnified in these boards. And it's partly because of a mistake on my part and it's more a mistake in general of all the boards due to the physics of what's actually happening. And it didn't occur to me at the time how significant that impact would be. So quick little um, physics exp uh, eighth grade physics explanation. When I, cause that's what I taught. When I fill these boards with the resin, including adding the cast and all that stuff, I'm putting a dam against the edge. All right. I'm putting a dam against the edge and then I'm filling the resin to marks that I have on the inside, right? I've marked off different depths and I'm filling to that depth and that depth. And each of those are different colors to get that, that gradation. Now, what happens when you pour a liquid into um, a container, all right, is that it will, most liquids, not all, but a lot of liquids will cling to the, the, the sides of the container and they'll actually kind of walk up it. And you can see it if you remember, you know, those of you who remember science class, I hope some of my students will, um, that the, uh, if you fill like a, a there we go, in frame, if you fill a test tube, that's what this is, with a liquid, all right, at the top of the, of the water line, if in this case, you'd see a little, a little U shape, all right, and it's more easily noticed when you have a tiny, uh, thin container. This U shape here is called the meniscus, and I always used to tell my uh, students when I was teaching, Mr. Tiscus likes the meniscus, um, so you'd remember what it was uh, called. So now you should remember as well. But the important thing about when you were doing chemistry and you wanted to um, measure exactly where the fluid level is, is you'd measure it um, in the middle. So you'd sort of take this top and this bottom and you would measure um, the, uh, you know, the reading from in between the bottom and the top of that curve. Now, what I'm doing now in this instance, right, is I have this, this uh, high dam and I have these little tiny tick marks, tick, 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 all the way down. And these are really close to each other. They're like maybe an eighth of an inch apart. They're very, very tight. So what's happening is that this is a, this section whoosh, magnified, all right? And so what's happening, uh, straight, straight, how's that? Close enough is that um, because these marks are so uh, close to each other, the curve can be quite extreme in how much it travels between those two marks. To make it more complicated is that this liquid is basically opaque. So I can't even see where the line is. Once I cover it with the top of the meniscus, I, I have to keep filling it and it's blind. I don't know. I thought if I'm really close, it's not gonna be a big deal. Well, yeah, actually, yeah, it was a big deal. And on these two boards, um, it highlights that issue. And when you look at these unions, um, and I think this angle will show it all right, this board had a slightly thicker pore of green. Now that was actually part of an error on my part, but it exemplifies what happened on all the boards, even with best practice. Um, and so this board shifted green as a result. And this board was um, a much truer dark blue. Even this ocean board here is, um, which is you know uh, one of the more optimum pores, um, that board actually is shifted slightly green as well. So what, that's why that happened. Let's just start there. And then um, in this particular instance, I'm able to um, color shift this by adding a darker caulking over it and bring that at least around the edges. Um, and you can see uh, probably as we get a little more towards the shore that that green is a little bit more pronounced, um, assuming it shows up on the camera and I'll see what it looks like in editing. But um, luckily for me, when I poured these boards, there was a little lip. Um, again, it's the meniscus, but I didn't fill it perfectly um, high enough, so I had to leave some of that lip to make a nice smooth uh, join between the two boards in terms of their height. So that's actually giving me a little room to fill with the caulking, uh, which is good because I was worried that that would look awkward. 
Um, and if you're looking and you still see some green in between, um, I actually need another layer to go over this um, to cover some of the peaks um, because the troughs are filling with caulking more easily. And then I'll have to do another layer over those peaks um, so that all of the, the, the topography of the waves is all a uniform color. And that's allowing me to bridge those two colors and bring them uh, closer together. And so finally, I wanted to um, show another physics problem that actually slowed down the boards uh, in that I was trying to get the caulking to set up more quickly by warming it. And what I discovered is that when I heat it uh, too much, which means anything more than just very gently warm, um, it will actually cause bubbles to form in the caulking. And you can see um, some of those bubbles in through here. And I think they're going to show up in the, uh, in the close camera here. But what happens is that this is my thinking, at least what, you know, my theory. Uh, I think I get a good shot with it, though, is that when I mix in the mineral spirits to thin the caulking, um, when I begin to heat it, the uh, vaporized, the uh, vapor pressure of the mineral spirits is low enough um, that it begins to expand and come out of solution basically with the caulking and it forms a bubble and then it, the caulking sets up too fast before the bubble can recollapse. Now the reason I think that's what's happening is that when I um, mix the mineral spirits in the caulking and I degas it, um, to get all the regular air bubbles out, the uh, mineral spirits are at a low enough pressure and a high enough temperature that it'll actually start to boil. And inside the caulking, bubbles will form. And then once I take it out and the pressure is restored, um, the bubbles go back into solution. It takes a few minutes and then it collapses and then I have a perfectly clear caulking. So um, part of the problem with this kind of an area is that, um, you know, I can't, push that cure time any faster than it wants basically and i i was a little sad about that because it, it, it adds actually quite a bit of time and i've already told the customer when he watches this uh, you know this is why um that um i need to finish the boards you know they're they're 95 percent done to be honest with you um and then i just need to put them on the shelf and let them sit for a week and then i can come back and do a final touch up on the caulking let that sit because i need to let that set up permanently because the final layer then will be the gloss coat which is um, the polyoptic uh, material and I've done it in a uh, review in the product reviews if you want to go see that material there. So even though I'm almost done I have to wait until that last stage sets in. And one of the other problems and I've noticed other bubbles elsewhere in the material and I think um, it's partly due to that and i'm wondering it's been a while since i've laid down some layers so i can't remember what the temperatures were maybe or or other conditions there whether i tried to warm them up i don't remember now um, but also you know when i'm applying it even though it's been perfectly degassed and it's bubble free when i press it into these layers um, the the caulking will fold and that can trap air in it as well so there are some bubbles um, you know scattered throughout in some areas moderately um you know more than i would like to see um but it's probably a combination of these two factors and in fact when i'm putting down this material i have to go back through and pick open all of the bubbles that i can find that are of any significant size so that then i can flow back underneath and uh you know not entrap those bubbles and in fact in uh, this close-up i think i don't know if it'll show at this angle there's actually um a, a bubble here and this is um, actually a bubble trapped underneath the cast when I put the waves down and I'm really I've been looking at that one and saying how did that happen because I was really um, uh, getting quite good at putting down the um, cast layers to not trap bubbles and when there was a bubble I was um, it, fixing them so I don't know what happened there but it just shows that you know so many liquids so many layers um, you know really a challenge to just get you know them perfect all the way through uh, but in any case this is why I can't rush this um, last stage of the um, final texturing of the water so that gives you a look at the water and the challenges it presented and some of the ways I was able to hurdle those challenges. And I'm pretty proud actually of my ability to problem solve and fix all these things that are unforeseen. And I 
can't help but feel like if I had done a little more planning, I might have been able to anticipate and maybe fix some of these uh, problems before they happen. But I'm also being fair to myself in knowing that I put a ton of planning into this in terms of, you know, the materials and how to do the cliff faces and, you know, um, um, you know how to make the wave texture and the, the casting and all of that. So it's not like I didn't, you know, walk into it blindly, but, um, you know, there are some things in the project that maybe, I don't know, with a little more forethought. Oh, because Science Guy, I knew about the meniscus. In fact, when I started pouring, I could see it and I was like, eh. And it occurs to me now that if I had used uh, plexiglass for the sides for the dams, then I could look at it from the outside in and then see the line and see where the fill has reached. And that would have given me a much more precise uh, ability to pour those layers. So um, that's sort of a hindsight, but um, that's maybe one of the things I'm going to try to keep in mind for future projects. What is likely to happen when I do it this way. What do you think might be the problems? And then try to anticipate them a little bit more. And that comes with experience. And I'm gaining more experience all the time and uh, different kinds of problems. And also to be fair to myself, um, it, just to say that the problems, and I'll talk about the surf in the next video, and there was challenges there. Uh, but part of that is the, just the sheer scope of this project. Um, so many large boards, so many layers to pour, right? If there's four, uh, what is it? Um, two, three, I can't remember, I'd have to look. Uh, maybe four layers of resin, one layer for the cast, and then um, uh, plus then the transition to the shore is at least two layers of caulking. Um, and so, I don't know, we're talking like seven to eight, maybe nine layers of materials. That's crazy to try to manage and get them all the same, <laughs> you know, I don't, so, um, you know, while I may be able to, to tweak and fix, it is a, a unique set of challenges just because of the type of project it is and how big it is and having all of those boards all matched to each other. It's, it's been, um, it's been unique. So, um, as I mentioned, part two will cover the surf and, um, once this video is up, I'm sort of back in connection with the rest of the world again. So I will be uh, checking the comments and um, emails and uh, getting, you know, more present than the, you know, hermit locked up in his cave, desperately pushing, you know, caulking around and, and pressing seaweed onto shore, which is what I've been doing for the last week. So as always, thank you so much for joining me. Questions and comments down below. Um, there's the little, uh, who's he, what's it? Wait a minute, wait a minute. The monitor should let me know that it's over here. And, um, and if you have any questions about those, of course, always let me know. Uh, so hopefully you will come back to join me for the part two with the surf. Oh, I thought my mic moved. And uh, because you'll know I'll be back soon with another Terrence video. them up and push them. Um, look at the camera, Mike. How about you look at the camera? It's an option. I mean, you could look anywhere you want. Help him key it in. So now you'll remember too. How about we look at the monitor, uh, the camera? The uh, two, I gotta wipe my face. I'm sweating. Okay. All right. That's good. It's all good. It's all good. Mm. Makeup, makeup, where's my makeup crew? And so finally, I want, look at the lens, Mike.